In this video, I will show you how to make your own ArchiFrame element types. Custom element types can be defined in the element types menu in the main element tools window. As you can see, my list of custom element types is empty, and now I'll create a new element type with two layers, horizontal internal studying, and then the main framing. So first click new, and now that I've created an element type, I'll edit its composite settings. First, I'll set the viewing direction, which in this case will be from the element's inside to its outside. Next, I'll set an ID for my new element type. You can later access this element type through its ID in the list of all element types. The ID links the element's definition to elements that have been placed in your project. So, if you have already placed ArchiFrame elements, you should not modify the ID anymore. Now I'll show you what happens if I create an element stamp text. So if I open the elevation drawing, the text will be shown here in the stamp of the drawing. Now let's move on to composite settings. Here, the only thing you'll probably need to edit is the option of whether or not to show the element type ID. All the other settings control projections, and if they need to be edited, it's best to contact us at Archiframe and we'll help you. Now that my composite settings are set up, I'll start adding layers to the element type. Since this type doesn't have any layers yet, I can create a new one with either add before or add after. No layers have been defined, so the layer just says empty. Next, I'll add a new definition for this layer with edit slash new type. First, I have to add a new layer with the new button. This layer will be horizontal studying. I'll give it a name in the layer ID field. And this 45 refers to the thickness of the layer. Next, I'll set the layers type. From the drop down list, I'll choose framing horizontal long. Long means that the horizontal pieces will extend all the way from the element's left side to its right side. Now I'll go through these template settings. Density is the average density of the layer, including insulation and all the wooden pieces. It is used in the listings. Layer thickness will be the same as the material's thickness in this case, so 45 millimeters. Then I could set different materials on the left and right hand sides of the layer. So on the left, I'll set the Swedish material list. And I'll leave these settings untouched. And on the right hand side, I'll use the same as on the left. And then at the bottom of the studding, let's use bigger planks. So 45 times 145 millimeters. And on the top, let's leave the default value. Planks to opening sides defines how horizontal pieces are placed above and below windows. With the value 2, these horizontal pieces' length will be the same as the width of the window, rather than extending all the way from the left side of the studding to the right side. Planks to opening horizontal determines whether there will be vertical pieces on the left and right hand sides of the window. For spacing, let's use 450 millimeters. And the spacing tolerance means that if the stud is further than, for example, 20 millimeters from its proper place, an extra stud will be added. And finally, let's set the main material ID. This is the material used for the studding, except for those special pieces we defined earlier. And I don't need to edit any of these options for the horizontal studding, so I'll just click OK. Now we've finished our first layer. We'll edit these composite settings at the end of this process once all the layers have been defined. So next, I'll just add a new layer after the studying. At this point, it's important to remember to click New, since I want to add a new layer type instead of editing an existing one. And this layer will be wall framing. When you make IDs for your layers, it's good to develop some kind of clear system. So, for example, my ID is the main material of this framing layer. And again, let's set the thickness. And 600 is OK for the spacing. The material of this layer will be 45 times 195 millimeters. 
and no changes here. So the bottom and top will be the same as the main material. And in this case, we'll use a special bottom structure. So I'll check the double bottom option on and set some custom settings for the bottom. So the material original means the lowest piece in the element, and we want it to be 45 times 45 millimeters. The material double refers to the special plank that has been added to the element. We want it to be thin, for example, 11 times 195 millimeters. This field defines the distance of the double piece from the front side of the original piece. The distance is measured from the element's viewing direction, which in this case is the inside. This time, we want the double piece to be behind the original, so we'll set 150 millimeters as the distance. This figure comes from 195 minus 45, which are the thicknesses of the double piece and the original piece. And now we have the framing layer defined. So next we'll just have to specify the layer types. So the framing layers type should be main framing, and the studding layers type should be studding interior. Our viewing direction is from the inside, so we should set the studding layers anchor on the inside as well. So the front side of this layer is the interior of the whole wall element. And the studding layer will not follow any other layer, so it's independent of main framing. And the framing layer's anchor names will be framing interior and framing exterior. Okay, then let's place this new wall element to this spot which is currently missing framing. I'll use the Archiframe selection tool to find this spot on the floor plan. So now I know that this is the right place. And before placing the wall we just created, I'll check the height of the Archiframe wall nearby, and then I'll use the same height for our new wall. So let's force the top of our wall to 2535 millimeters, and then let's choose the wall element type that we just created. And when I place the wall element, I'll use the framing layer's interior side as the anchor point. And then let's look at some more settings. I want the elevation drawings to be in their own story so that they'll all be in one place. And no change here. And here, let's force 15 millimeters of oversize to the openings. And all the other settings are OK. Finally, I'll add a new element by using the Place by Line option. So now I'll use the interior side of the framing as the anchor point. And I'll click on the interior side of the wall framing from here to here. And right now I can see that there's a mistake in the definition, so the wall framing layer is too thin. And the thickness of the layer should be 195 millimeters. And now it's fixed, so I can create planks. And now I want to see the planks relating to this selected wall element in 3D. So I can use Archiframe's Show in 3D tool, which will show the planks for this element in 3D. And now I can also show you what we created. So this is the bottom piece, which is wider than the main framing. And here are the slightly bigger side pieces, which are cut to the horizontal pieces. And the name of the horizontal studs template was Framing Horizontal Long. So as you can see, these pieces extend all the way from the left side to the right. And the only exception is the openings, where the pieces are cut here to the window, where they can be easily nailed. And at the top, we just have the default material. And finally, let's look at the bottom of this element. So here we have the 11 millimeter piece, and this is the small piece.